All righty. Welcome, everyone, to our Fill Your Pantry Pickling Foods webinar by University of Illinois Extension. Since it is right on 1 o'clock here, Central Time, we are going to get going. Um, before we start, we do ask that you make sure your microphone is muted to prevent any background sound during our presentations, and then make sure your camera is turned off so we have a really strong bandwidth. And thank you again for all your help with that. So today is our sixth of our eight webinars in the Fill Your Pantry series, following our previous canning, freezing, fermenting, drying, um, and jams and jellies webinars. All of our webinars are being recorded, and luckily now most of our webinars are available on our website. Um, this website is goa.illinois.edu backslash nutrition well. So once I hand over the presentation to Mary Liz, our presenter, I'll type that in the chat box for you as well. But like I said, most of them now are on our website and available to you on the bottom of that page. Um, please use our chat box today to ask questions. We are keeping track of all the questions and Mary Liz will be answering them at the end of the presentation. Um, keep in mind that your presenter or Mary Liz will be going through some of these troubleshooting with pickles near the end of her presentation. So you might wanna wait with your questions as well. We do ask that you please refrain from answering questions in our chat box and leave it to Mary Liz, just so we know we're giving you the most updated and research-based information and answers to your questions. Um, since we are limited to an hour here, we will, if we don't get to all your questions, we have plenty of time in our last webinar where we did get to most of them. We are creating a nice handout of all these questions and that you'll get them with the other handouts in the next 10 to 15 days. Um, the recording actually for this webinar, so if you can't make it or you got to run out of the room during this, is going to be available on our state website tomorrow. I'll actually have it up. So let me introduce myself, the voice here. My name is Lisa Peterson and I'm your moderator today. I'm a nutrition and wellness educator with University of Illinois Extension. I work in Christian, Jersey, Macoupin, and Montgomery counties in West Central Illinois. And your presenter is Mary Liz Wright, who is a nutrition and wellness educator serving Clark, Crawford, and Edgar counties on the east side of the state. Mary Liz has over 20 years of experience with Extension, and I'm going to pass the pickle on over to Mary Liz. Mary Liz? So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. We're coming to you today from University of Illinois Extension, which is the flagship outreach uh, effort of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Extension has a presence in all 102 counties of the state of Illinois, and, and our uh, programs and information reaches far beyond that. Each month, the web pages of U of I Extension draw more than 5 million views, and more than 200 countries have accessed Extension's web-based information. So we are, we're a little proud of that. That's why we have that slide in there, but we are part of that land grant university system and we are here to serve you and, and to provide research-based information that will make your lives better. Today, we're going to talk about pickles. And uh, you can see my partner, Lisa, did uh, the graphic work on this slide. I, it made me chuckle a little bit, but I appreciate her, her wacky techiness. So today we're, we will talk again about food safety when handling and preserving food. If you have joined us in other webinars about food preservation, you will note that some of this material is a bit repetitive, but when you're talking about food safety, we feel you cannot repeat it often enough. So uh, we're, we'll be talking about food safety. We'll talk more specifically about how to preserve pickles and, and what does that entail and what does it mean. And we'll highlight a little bit some of those problems that can occur when you are making pickles. So when we are dealing with produce, that food that we are taking from, from plants, from the ground, uh, it has a mission given to it by nature to begin decay the moment that item is harvested. And the purpose of the fruit or vegetable is really to provide food for that seed to sprout and grow a new generation. 
Well, why is that important to us? It's important because we want to preserve our food. We don't want it to decay. And so our methods of preservation intend to stop that decomposition, to stop that enzyme activity that will lead to uh, decay and food spoilage. The other things that we're concerned about is making that environment hostile to those pathogenic bacteria, to those bacteria that can make us ill. Now, we know that all food contain bacteria either on the surface or, or systemic within them. And um, what we want to do is control the growth of that bacteria. We don't want it to be able to reproduce and uh, produce toxins or, or uh, make themselves uh, plentiful enough to cause us uh, any type of illness. And so uh, acidity, temperature, time, oxygen, and moisture, these are all factors uh, when we're considering those pathogenic uh, bacteria. So when we're talking about food preservation, as I said, our whole mission is to slow down the enzymatic or decay process and kill or slow down the growth of the pathogens. And we can do this classically uh, with three different methods. Canning heats foods or uh, introduces acid as well as heat to kill or prevent uh, those bacteria from, from living. Freezing really inactivates the enzymes. When you listen to the freezing webinar, you found out that foods must be blanched first and then frozen. But again, the freezing and drying do the, uh, they prevent the growth of those pathogens. Today, we're talking about pickling, which is an introduction introduction of acid, either by a natural process that we're going to highlight here in the next slide or two, or by introducing an acidic solution uh, by using vinegar. So when we're talking about canning, we always talk about the two methods of canning. The boiling water bath uses a pot of boiling water, and it is a preservation method for all acidic food. Pressure canning, you must use a pressure canner because what we need to do when acid is not present, we need to heat the very interior of that jar to 240 degrees to kill those pathogenic bacteria that can survive um, in an anaerobic or absence of air environment. And so specifically, what sort of pathogenic bacteria are we talking about? Well, Clostridium botulinum. And, and it's kind of an odd beast in that this bacteria is present. It's soil borne. It's around us all the time, but it really does not cause any harm until it is entered into an environment that has no oxygen. Well, let's think about this for a minute. The canning process exhausts the air from that glass jar of food, rendering the inside of that jar to have no oxygen, it creates a vacuum. And so we have this botulism bacteria in a friendly environment for itself. Now, botulism likes no oxygen. However, it does not like acid. And so therefore, when we add acid or create acid, foods can be processed in a boiling water bath canner. Other foods, that don't have acid need to be canned or processed in a pressure canner. Like I said, it needs to get up to 240 degrees. Now, sometimes we get the question, well, you know, botulism, that's an old fashioned thing. We never hear of that anymore, but actually we do. Uh, just for example, from 1999 to 2008, so a little uh, time span of just a few years, there were 116 botulism outbreaks. Botulism is um, a systemic toxin that affects your nervous system. There is no known cure. Their hospitals have an anecdote, but it will simply stop the damage that has occurred prior to the administration of that anecdote. So very important to pay attention to use that pressure canner when you are canning low acid foods. And it's also important to use an accurate dial gauge if you have a pressure canner with a dial gauge. We recommend having that dial gauge pressure uh, gauge tested 
annually. And you can have that done by contacting your local extension office. Basic kitchen safety, very important. Personal hygiene. One thing that people often don't think about is we recommend you wash your hands before you go to the garden as well as after. And the reason for that is if you have germs on your hands, by touching that produce, you're transferring the germs from your hands to that produce, and then you'll be dealing with that particular bacteria throughout the process. Of course, we don't want to handle food if we are feeling ill, and we want to pull our hair back, put a hair net, or cover your beard. Uh, no one really wants to have a, a, a hair in the item that they're going to eat. And of course, all utensils, all vessels we're going to use, the surfaces in our kitchen, all must be clean. You can clean them with hot soapy water and if you want to take an additional step, you can go ahead and sanitize those surfaces by adding uh, one teaspoon of unscented non-gel, just regular bleach to a quart of cool water and um, spray it on, let it air dry. Okay, enough of the general information. We're here to talk about pickles. What exactly is a pickle? It's a fruit or vegetable that has been immersed in a brine, vinegar, or other solution, sometimes left to ferment for a period of time, either through an acidic solution or souring by lacto-fermentation. We're gonna hit that phrase a time or two. Lacto-fermentation, remember that. Uh, there are all kinds of pickles, sour, sweet, vegetable, fruit, relishes, chutneys, even pickled eggs. Quick pickles are made with a vinegar, salt, or vinegar sugar solution, while fermented pickles require thyme and salt to do the fermenting, to do the preservation, the lacto-fermentation. Pickles have been around for a long time. One of our most ancient forms of food um, probably the most ancient form of food preservation, dating back to 2030 BC, uh, when the cucumbers in Italy, in India, were pickled. Uh, the word pickle that we use comes from the Dutch pekel or Northern German pokel, meaning salt or brine. Every um, region of the world has its own way of pickling foods. Pickled products appeared early in America. You've seen uh, movies where they have the big pickle barrel where uh, the pickles were would be pulled out. And by as early as the 1920s, the US Department of Agriculture had published instructions about how to make pickles at home. So we have several different types of pickles. So that can be brined, cured in a brine, salt and water, in a brine solution preserved with vinegar. We have what we call fresh pack or quick process pickles that are simply covered in vinegar, spices, and seasonings. Um, however, if you do the quick process pickle, the flavors are better if you let the jar stand for several weeks um, before opening. You can even make fruit pickles, and you notice there in the bottom right-hand corner of the slide, that is pickled cantaloupe an in interesting um, little side dish or, or relish. Um, you can do the whole sweet and sour thing uh, when you're making these, um, these types of, of pickled fruits. Or you can make relish and we, we encourage folks to make relish out of those pickles that don't have that perfect shape. Um, pickles, um, relish, chutney, chow chow, all of those things are made with chopped vegetables and of course then put into an acid or vinegar solution. As I said, uh, pickles have been around a very long time and every region of the world has a particular way to, to pickle uh, or preserve foods in, in a brine or vinegar solution. Uh, Eastern Europe, here, Europe, we're familiar with the kosher dills and then of course the lacto-fermented cabbage known as sauerkraut, not a true pickle, but a fermented product. English sweet pickles, which uh, many folks like, are just vinegar, sugar, and spices. While the, the French have the tiny spice cornicons, or cornichons, the upper, upper left-hand corner. In the Middle East, pickled foods are served with every meal from olives to lemons and Russians pickle tomato, uh, Koreans have the kimchi there on the right, Japanese pickle plums, daikon radishes, and the Italians pickle eggplants and peppers. So 
all sorts of interesting ways around the world to enjoy preserved foods. When you go to a restaurant or if you're looking on the internet or in a magazine, we're seeing um, house made pickles or small batch or or quick pickles, call them, call them what you will, uh, but they've become very, very popular. And you can see by these pictures that, that um, it goes far beyond the classic cucumber. And these are recipes that call for salt, vinegar, and spices. Uh, you can even use flavored vinegars in these particular recipes. And the reason for that is they will not be processed. These pickles are not then put through a water bath can or processing time. They're simply refrigerated and used as sort of a pickled slash fresh product. They should always be refrigerated. Uh, they'll keep for a few weeks in your refrigerator, but they are not shelf stable. So, so be careful when you're looking for those recipes. If you're looking for something to preserve on a, on a shelf um, in your pantry, these are not the pickles for you. These are the ones to make on a, on a Friday and then enjoyed um, a few days after that, after the flavors have had a chance to meld. Equipment, uh, particular equipment. This is, this is important in the pickling process. So for example, if you are fermenting pickles, you need to use a stone crock, food grade plastic. And by that, I mean, you can go to, um, a deli or a fast food place and ask them for their five gallon buckets that have held food and use those. Uh, just don't use a random five gallon bucket that's made for anything other than food. You can also use glass. Uh, we don't want you using garbage bags or trash liners as brining containers. And, and you know, that might sound odd to you, but, but actually you can Imagine someone thinking, oh, uh, the, the plastic liner uh, will fit really well inside my uh, five gallon bucket and I'm going to use that, but, but don't. Uh, those are made from plastic that could leach into your uh, final product. You can also ferment, uh, particularly sauerkraut in quart uh, jars, uh, but you have to be careful with spoilage. So always use clean containers, of course. For quick pickling, and so this, this is the, you're going to be heating your solution uh, before pouring it over the jars of pickles. So um, you need to use aluminum, stainless steel, or unchipped enamel. Do not use iron, copper, brass, or galvanized utensils. This could cause a problem with your end product, and it could actually cause a chemical reaction that would make the pickles toxic. So make sure you're using aluminum, steel, or unchipped enamel. It's recommended that you also use soft water. Hard water can contain minerals that may cloud the pickle brine or cause off flavors or discoloration. So how can you soften water? Well, boil it for 15 minutes, allow the boiled water to stand for 24 hours, pour off the water, leaving the sediment behind. It's just the minerals that are contained in some of our water. All right, so our most common item to pickle are cucumbers. Now, there are several different types of cucumbers um, on the market, but you want to find pickling cucumbers. Uh, so if you purchase seed earlier this spring or you're planning for next year, don't um, plant just the regular cucumbers or the English cucumbers or salad cucumbers. Make sure you're planting pickling cucumbers. The seeds are much smaller, uh, the skin's a little thinner, and uh, they make a much better end product. The other thing to remember when you are canning cucumbers, when you're pickling, is to cut 1 16th, at, at least 1 16th, I always go a little bit more just to be on the safe side, from the blossom end. So that's the end opposite the stem of the cucumber. And this is because the blossoms may contain an enzyme which can make your pickles soft. And everybody wants a crisp pickle. All right, so when we are processing pickles, when we are making those pickles, salt is usually an ingredient. And I say usually, and I'm gonna say always. Um, and so what kind of salt do you need to use? It is recommended that you use canning or pickling salt made for that purpose. You really don't wanna use, use 
um, iodized table salt. And if you think about your table salt, and I'm going to talk about a brand here, although I'm not endorsing it. There's a brand that has a little girl and an umbrella on it. And the slogan is, when it rains, it pours. And that is because an anti-caking agent has been added to that salt. And it's that anti-caking agent um, in your pickle solution that will make your product uh, cloudy and it will not be uh, very pretty. Uh, flake salt is not recommended, recommended nor is uh, any kind of reduced sodium. Do not attempt to make fermented pickles by reducing the salt. The salt is very important. The reason being, as I said, the lacto-fermentation. So lactobacillus is a type of bacteria that is on the surface of vegetables. And if that lactobacillus is encouraged to grow, it, it's okay in a salt environment. So we encourage that good bacteria to grow and as it grows, its byproduct is lactic acid, which then acts as a preservative for the, the pickles. Salt also inhibits the growth of the bad bacteria, of the, of the pathogenic bacteria um, that can uh, cause spoilage. So it's really important to follow directions exactly and go ahead and use that pickling salt. It's not that expensive, uh, sold in most uh, grocery stores or, or um, large stores that have also sell canning equipment. Sugar, again, just like we talked about with jam or jelly, sugar is important. Recipes are important. Recipes are chemical formulas that should not be altered. So, if the recipe calls for X amount of sugar or a particular type of sugar, follow those directions. Along those lines, make sure you're using a commercially prepared vinegar that is at 5% acidity. How can you tell if it's 5% acidity? It says so right on the label. So watch for that 5% acidity. This is not the time to use um, flavored vinegars or, or any type of, of homemade vinegar. Again, the chemical formula of the recipe tells you exactly how much vinegar to add. Don't alter it. Don't, um, don't try and replace it with anything and only use a tested recipe from USDA extension or some of the commercial canning um, companies. All right, what is the biggest complaint of pickles that we hear? My pickles uh, were soft. Everyone um, would like to have those snappy, crunchy pickles that we see in, in delis. So how are we going to achieve that? Well, grandma used alum. It is determined by USDA at the Nat National Center for Home Food Preservation uh, to be unnecessary. It does not improve the firmness of quick process pickles. However, there are some recipes um, that might suggest it to use in fermented pickles. But what USDA tells us is that it is unnecessary. Now, the other half of this slide, food grade lime. Lime, the calcium in lime definitely improves pickle firmness. You use calcium hydroxide, uh, which provides the calcium, which combines with the natural pectin in the cucumbers to form um, a calcium pectate, giving the pickles a firmer texture. However, you must be very careful to make sure you're removing all the lime. Number one, make sure you're buying the food grade lime, not the lime you put on your field. But this is food grade lime that needs to be rinsed and drained and rinsed and soaked and drained um, at least two or three times. And so you want to make sure you're, again, following directions exactly. All right, so if we are talking about curing or fermenting uh, pickles, 
fermented and cured dill pickles or those kosher dills that we saw the picture of can be fermented and cured in about three weeks. Refrigerator dills take about one week and a fresh pack or quick process pickles are not fermented. However, many are brined several hours or overnight then drained and covered with vinegar and seasonings. Um, in addition, sometimes uh, the pickles as they are brined are put in ice which can also help with the texture. All right, and so now we're down to that portion of our program where we're gonna be talking about some problems uh, that can happen when we're making pickles. So soft or slippery pickles, um, your vinegar might've been too weak, insufficient amount of brine, not processed properly, blossom ends not removed, or um, you might have be using old spices. And, and you've heard me say this before. If you're going to the trouble and taking the time to make a, a can of a, a food preserved product, use good ingredients. Make sure those spices are not moldy or, or so dry they no longer have a scent or a flavor. Uh, make sure you're following those directions exactly. The opposite end is a strong, bitter taste. So pay attention to the cooking times. Pay attention to your measurements. Watch the vinegar. Uh, dry weather. You know, atmospheric conditions can have a lot to do um, with, with basic cooking and also food preservation. So, so you're going to want to um, pay attention to that sort of thing. Uh, shriveled pickles. Again, it could be dry weather. So nothing you've done wrong. It's just that particular year. Um, again, overcooking, overprocessing, overmeasuring, um, all of these things you want to pay attention to. Uh, the number two in the bottom half there where it says cucumber of poor quality. When we are processing food, um, as I said when I did the jam and jelly, you don't want to process, make pickles or jam out of damaged or overripe uh, fruit or vegetables. Those um, simply need to be uh, salvaged and eaten fresh if possible or put into your compost pile. Uh, that's, it's not a good way to save damaged uh, food by preserving it. You're just going to cause yourself a lot of time and um, trouble and end up with not a good end product. The white sediment in the jar, um, like I said, that can be the anti-caking agent or it could also be um, using hard water. So dark or discolored pickles, again, minerals in hard water. Ground spices, so when a pickle recipe calls for spices, quite often it will call for those whole spices and just wrap them up in a little um, square of cheesecloth and tie it with a little bit of, of string and drop it down into your solution. That way you can pull it back out and um, you won't have uh, dark coloring or it, might, it won't cause clouding, that sort of thing. So remember what I said about um, using utensils that will not cause a chemical reaction and always use those pickling salts. Preventing spoilage. So uh, like I said, the, the recipes for those quick pickles and the small batch pickles or house-made pickles that we're seeing um, must be kept in the refrigerator. If, if we try and set something out on the, contain, on the counter, even if it is um, acidic, it it's, can still spoil. And so we need to pay attention, use a recipe that calls for a processing time, use a recipe from one of those approved sources, and follow those directions exactly. Something that's interesting and can be used if the recipe indicates is something called low temperature pasteurization. And so this is in place of the boiling water bath processing and it may result in a better product texture, but you need to be very careful and again, follow directions exactly if you're wanting to do this. All right, so the resources that we used um, come from the National Center for Home Food Preservation and then our own food preservation uh, resource site.
that you can find by um, going to extension.illinois.edu slash food preservation. And I think what we can do now are entertain some questions. Lisa, how are we doing on that? Yeah, yep, we did get some questions that came in and I'm okay. gonna have you address them. Alrighty. All right, so here's the first one here. So what is the role of grape leaves found in oh, dill pickle recipes? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I talked about the enzyme on the blossom end of the pickle might um, cause the pickle to be soft. There's kind of an opposite enzyme in a grape leaf that will prevent the pickle from being soft. Now, I have never used that recipe. That's um, an Eastern European tradition. But the way I understand it from a chemical standpoint, it can work. All right. And please feel free to keep asking questions in our chat box too as Mary Liz is answering them. Um, okay, so our next one here is when I make radish quick pickles, the mm -hmm. red skin bleeds mm -hmm. and the pickles are just pink all over. Is there and a way aren't they pretty? <laughs> right? No, they yeah. can prevent it. <laughs> There's really nothing you can do to prevent that. Yeah, they're just pink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody asked, where do you, going back to the grape leaves, where mm -hmm. do you get grape leaves? You know, I think in some of our larger metropolitan areas, they're, they're sold. Uh, I believe that you could probably also order them. Um, I, I, again, that's not something I'm familiar with. Um, so I'd, I'd have to defer to, to someone else on that. All righty. How do I, what can you use to make pickles crisp? <laughs> yes, excellent question. Um, and so there, there are the, the other methods. Uh, if you're making quick pickles, the brining them in ice can help. The, as we said, uh, when we were talking about alum and food grade lime, uh, food grade lime can help make pickles crisp. However, you need to find a recipe that indicates uh, you to use that, follow the directions exactly with the rinsing and the soaking and the soaking and the rinsing and the back and forth. Uh, alum, um, as we said, is not recommended, but can be used uh, with a good recipe worth a, a fermented pickle. So, you know, that is the age old question. It's the, it's kind of the holy grail of the pickle world. How do you make them crisp? Everybody wants their pickles to taste just like, and I'm not gonna endorse a brand, but just like that uh, commercial pickle that's only sold in your refrigerator case. You know why? <laughs> because it's been barely processed. That's why. Um, once you process the pickle, once you immerse it in a boiling water bath, uh, you're going to have some softening. But that being said, you still need to process. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not contradicting myself, right? <laughs> This has come up a lot, and I, I can actually address this one. Okay. We've got a lot of questions about the slides and the presentation for those coming in late. Uh, um, this okay. Will all be available to you? Luckily, because of um, some work with Extension, this PowerPoint presentation is being recorded today, and I will have it onto the website tomorrow. Um, we'll remind you of the website here at the end. Um, the PowerPoint presentation, we will also put all of our handouts out. But you're also going to get an email where you can get the handouts a little quicker by filling out a survey for us. So yes, we will have the slides and we actually have really nice handouts with this as well as recipes that we are giving out um, at the end and you'll probably get them in the next 10 to 15 days. Is that, yeah, that's probably a good estimation, right Mary Liz? <laughs> yeah, that gives us a little breathing room, yes. Yeah, especially when we're trying to, because all these questions as well that you're asking, we are going to address them all and give them in your handouts. So yes. if you had a question and we didn't hit it, hopefully we still have plenty of time, but or if you wanted a better explanation, we'll be able to provide that in the handouts. Okay, going back to the questions. You bet. Okay, so this one is, how do you get crispy pickled peppers, such as banana or jalapeno? Mm -hmm. Again, uh, good question. I, uh, just following those, the, those recipes, and, and again, it's, it's hard to do, um, but you'll also notice that uh, even commercially canned peppers tend to be a little soft. Um, it's in the, in the canning process, you're breaking down that cell wall a little bit. Um, you can find a recipe that uses the food grade lime. And like we said, the, the calcium will react with the natural pectin and, and firm up that cell wall. But um, it's not going to be like a raw, a raw item. 
Okay, so I have a question about refrigerator pickles, which is something we did a lot of addressing on here. So yes. I've seen recipes where after the pickles cool, they're left on the counter for a couple days before placing in the refrigerator. I've also seen recipes where the pickles are cool, but they're put immediately in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Is placing it on the counter first safe? Well, um, you know, you can have, you have like a 24 to 48 hour window on most things, particularly in an acid solution. Um, I, their thought maybe is the flavors might develop a little more quickly at room temperature, but whenever I make them, I put them right in the fridge. Oh, this was a good question too. Pickling salt come, often comes in large containers. How long is it, how long can you safely store pickling salt? Oh, well, you know, uh, moisture is the enemy of salt. Mm -hmm. So keep it dry. What I do with mine is I, you know, you purchase it in a box, but then I put it in a Ziploc bag and it, it keeps for years. Yeah, I think it's one to three years roughly. But like, yeah. A lot of it has to do with yeah. it. Right. Alrighty. Let's see, going down here. Okay. Are you opposed to a good sea salt to include a lot more minerals? My question is for fermented pickles, which is Right, no. Just use that pickling salt, please. Um, the minerals that are associated with sea salt could cause clouding. You won't be satisfied with your end product. And, um, you know, there, there's a reason we recommend the pickling salt. So just use that. Which goes into the next one. Can you use kosher salt for pickling? Mm. Um, well, kosher salt is non-iodized. I know that. And so I would probably read the label. You don't want any kind of anti-caking agent. So pull up a, a pickling salt box and a kosher salt box and compare. If they have the same ingredients, you can use the kosher. Right. Let's see. So we're going through these here. Okay. Uh, do you recommend any canning process for lacto-fermentation? If so, would that kill the beneficial bacteria? This is a question we get, and, and I believe it was addressed in our fermentation. Uh, yes, we do recommend processing after the fermentation process, and the processing will kill the beneficial bacteria, unfortunately. I, I'm right in that, aren't I, Lisa? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, I believe so. I mean, I, I hate to give that answer. <laughs> no, um, I don't want to not be yeah. sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, is it safe to reduce a recipe? For example, I found a recipe from the National Center for Home Food Preservation that calls for eight pounds of pickling cucumbers, but I only mm -hmm. have four. Uh, are they fermented? Are they quick, I wonder? <laughs> well, okay. So if, if they're a quick pickle, I think as long as you can absolutely adhere to dividing it in half, you would be okay. But if you're fermenting, I think that all those ratios need to be kept the same. I hope that makes sense. Okay. I'm copying questions as we're going through these. Okay, so how long can I keep pickled green tomatoes in the fridge after opening the jar? Ooh. Well, you know, they're, they're preserved. So at least a couple of weeks, uh, maybe even longer, just watch for signs of spoilage. All right. Okay. So I'd like to make bread and butter pickles. Uh, do you, you don't mention these? Is it the same process? Uh, bread and but butter pickles are one of those quick pickles that are uh, quite often brined for uh, a few hours. The recipe that I use, um, they, they brine in salt and ice for three hours. And then you drain them and uh, bring to boil a sugar, uh, vinegar, spice solution that you then um, put the sliced um, cucumbers, onions, and peppers into. And so they're they're qualified as a as a quick pickle um, that you then process in a boiling water bath. Okay. Why do you recommend taking the temperature to two hundred forty degrees when two? 210 will kill all pathogens. You know, uh, it kills all common pathogens. It's that tricky, sticky, mm -hmm. uh, stubborn uh, botulism uh, pathogen that must be killed at 240. And uh, we want to render it lifeless so that it cannot produce the toxin that causes the uh, botulism reaction. Alrighty. 
And we kind of talked about this one already when you went through all your salt, but what of what's the difference between a sea salt and a pickling salt? Okay, a sea salt is going to have some trace minerals in it that uh, you're not going to want in the canning process. How long can you keep quick pickle jars? I think you kind of hit on this one too. Right, in, in your fridge, um, a couple of weeks, maybe even a little bit longer. Uh, there's, so many, yeah. Yeah. there's so many different recipes for pickled beets. What's critical? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, pickled beets that you are then going to process into a shelf-stable product, not pickled beets that you would keep in your fridge and use for a couple of weeks. So we need to distinguish those two. Pickled beets that you're going to process and then put on a shelf, you must, you must, you must use uh, an approved recipe, researched recipe. So from the USDA, from an extension source, from a commercial canning source such as ball or cur. Yeah, we got messages coming left and right. We still got plenty of time here. Okay. Yeah. This one is about um, your slide mentioned aluminum steel and unshipped enamel for quick pickling. Is glass mm -hmm. okay? Uh, yes, but if you have to heat it, I mean, I suppose there are glass pans, right? Mm -hmm. just, you know, just make sure you're using tempered glass. Yeah, that'd be the thing. Yeah. Is that's tempered right. glass. Yeah. <laughs> Might have some cracking. Yeah, you know, there are, there are stories out there now with um, the company that we've always um, trusted as tempered glass changed their formula, and we're seeing those glass vessels explode now. So be careful with glass. Okay, so um, do most people just do a canning bath for dill pickles, or do they pressure can? Uh, most just do the boiling water bath. Yeah. yeah, you don't, you could really harm the texture of those uh, dill pickles and, you know, you're using the acid, the vinegar, uh, to avoid any kind of botulism situation. I'm giving Mary Liz a break here. We have another question about the handouts from mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. um, from before sections. I don't know if they're referring to our other webinars. Um, those are the handouts that have been in our last five or six webinars are solely making their way to our website. So again, it's go.illinois.edu backslash nutrition well. I can put it back in the chat box. You scroll down to recorded webinars. Next to each webinar that's been recorded from our last couple series, there should be a handout that you click on that'll open to all our handouts from that webinar and a recording. So a recording of what's going on right now. So those are the ones we're recording. So yeah, so all the previous ones, they are coming up, but they've come up a little bit quicker now. Um, but yeah, they'll be available to you. Okay, back to questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Let Mary Liz take a drink of water there. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, any thoughts on fermentation locks? Are they necessary? And if so, do you recommend a particular type of formation jars? Oh, right, they're, they're commercially made. And that's again, something that I'm not well versed in. Um, however, our fermentation webinar, uh, I think address those. So if you wanna go to our site and, and look up that webinar itself, I think it would give you more information. And that one is on the website. I uploaded that one yesterday. So that okay. recording is available with its handouts. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so let's go through another one here. So I'd like to try pickling carrots. Should I dice slash cook them first? Um, would it be like beets? Okay, so if you're just doing the quick ones to, to put in your fridge, um, it's, it's best to cook them first, um, simply because a a uh, raw carrot in a vinegar solution, it would take it a long time to soften it and um, it will absorb the flavor better also if you cook it first. If you're talking shelf stable, then you need to follow your directions. Okay, okay. next one here. Hmm. Can you reuse the brine from commercially bought pickles to reuse for quick pickles? Sure, I do it all the time, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's going to weaken. Um, I, I would only use it one other time uh, because the water in the, the food and the you know, vegetable is going to be drawn out through osmosis because of the salt solution. And so you're weakening that salt solution every time you use it. So, so one additional time is, is about all that you would find acceptable. And we talked about this a little bit too, but can you use kosher salt in place of pickling salt? No. Asking. I mean, only if you just read that, read that label. 
So growing up, my mom just my mom used just regular cucumbers for pickling. Why does it matter now that we make sure we're buying pickling cucumbers or pickled cucumbers? Um, you, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Regular cucumbers have bigger seeds, um, more space in that middle, so you could end up with some hollow pickles. Um, it's it's really just um, kind of I don't really want to say, even say quality, but a uh, um, almost a cosmetic the the seeds are so small that they're just not obvious and they, they it looks like a better pickle all righty okay oh i like this question how do you feel about still having pickles from 2018 sure as long as they've been kept cool and dry you mean you haven't opened them i assume so if you if you haven't opened them they're they're fine if they've been in your fridge since 2018, I'd say you don't like pickles very much, so maybe you better quit making them. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, a couple, couple years, you're gonna notice some issues with, uh, with quality, if, if not some spoilage issues as well. Still getting questions trickling in here as I'm typing. You're trying to move them over. Yeah, oh. I'm watching, I'm watching. <laughs> We're up to 72. <laughs> You are a good moderator. <laughs> okay, so on 14 day pickles, can you safely reduce number of days if you in no. each step according to your recipe? And you already said no, no. before I finished it. No. <laughs> and, and a 14 day pickle is a fermented pickle, and so you need to follow those directions exactly. Um, the next one here how long are quick pickles able to be stored on a shelf after canning? Okay, just like any of our canned goods, we recommend that they be used within a year. And again, you have gone to all that trouble and, and some uh, amount of expense to preserve that food. It's, it's best to eat it at its peak quality. Now, that being said, as long as the food hasn't been uh, frozen or the, the lid rusted or uh, any any other signs of uh, compromise or damage, they will be safe for quite a lot longer than that, but the quality will suffer. So just try and use it up within a year. If it if you're getting towards the end of the year and it looks like you're going to have several jars left over, well, that's when you give it to friends and family. So clean out your pantry every year, start fresh, and uh, you'll be you will be pleased with the product. Can you suggest soaking fresh picked cucumbers overnight before pickling? Soaking them in like a brine solution, I wonder. Yeah, um, I, I, again, you need to follow the recipe. Um, many of those quick pickles do um, soak the pickles in brine. And I, and I will also tell you, and I've not seen it, it's on my bucket list for a field trip, uh, the areas of our country that raise commercial pickling cucumbers have large storage vessels, almost like our grain bins around Illinois, uh, but these large storage vessels hold cucumbers in a brine solution until they're ready to be processed. I, I think that's fascinating. Uh, not that you should do that because they have all sorts of commercial things that allow them to do that, but uh, some recipes might indicate for you to brine uh, cucumbers overnight before processing. But follow that recipe. All right. Okay. Is there any harm adding fresh cucumbers to commercial pickle juice slash brine after you finish off a jar of pickles? No, no. Just know that you're going to weaken that brine by, as I said, the water leaching out uh, by osmosis into that salty brine solution. Okay. Keeping on that topic as I'm going through here, mm -hmm. what can I do with any leftover brine? Can I store it and use it later, or does the brine have to be used? Or can brine? If, if you right, if you are if you are making your own brine to process a batch of pickles, discard that brine when you're finished. I was only talking about using you know the leftover pickle juice in a commercial jar, and you can add some fresh veggies to that and extend the life you know a, a little longer. But it's not uh, to be used as a as a preservation method. Okay, are cinnamon pickles the same process? Um, 
I've had cinnamon pickles and they're delicious. I know. Um, I'm like, I've never had them. Very interesting. I, I, I've seen them with zucchini uh, more so than cucumber, but I, I believe, um, you know, you can also have the cucumber. And again, uh, follow a recipe. Follow the recipe. If you're using a great grandma Mildred's recipe that was developed before 1985 uh, and you want to go ahead and make that recipe that's fine but then keep it in the refrigerator and eat them like quick pickles don't rely on her recipe to be the type of recipe that you can preserve on a shelf all right let's see somebody wanted you to share your favorite quick pickle recipe you described <laughs> oh well um, as I said, I, I like that three-hour brine uh, bread and butter pickle. I, I like those. That's we'll a staple. To, maybe you have to look at her handouts and include that one, Mary Elizabeth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me let me make a note of that. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. And like I said, we've had a lot of people requesting our slides. We will we'll mm -hmm. create, put them into a nice PDF form and get them to you as well with the handouts, just for those who do want the slides as well. Let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, and this one's we're not related. Not well. It's related to canning. But how do I find my local extension office to have the dial gauge on my pressure canner tested? Oh, excellent. Uh, well, just um, Google <laughs> whatever state you're in um, extension. So you know Illinois extension, and you can find the website. And what we have on our site, and I'm fairly sure other states do as well, is a map of the state of Illinois. And then you click on your county and it will give you the contact info uh, for the office in that county. That being said, many of our offices are closed temporarily due to the pandemic. And so, uh, for example, in, in our uh, area, leave a message on the recorder and uh, an extension educator or agent uh, we'll get back with you. And we're hoping to begin uh, testing those dial gauges sometime in August is, uh, is what we're hoping. So right in the heart of canning season, we <laughs> hope to be able to, to get out there and, and help you uh, in that canning process. Oh, goodness. I hope so. Okay. I hope so, too. <laughs> so last week during Jams and Jellies, you said not to use recipes developed before 1985. Is there a right. cocktail on pickle recipes? Right. No canning recipes. Uh, should be used if they've been developed before 1985. So the reference to great aunt or great grandma Mildred when I said if you want to make pickles go ahead but treat them as quick pickles and keep them refrigerated. This is a good question for you specifically Mary Liz. Um, okay. I'm interested in doing farmers markets so we're talking ah. about food here. Since my kitchen is not certified am I okay to sell my apple butter jellies pickles etc? Well in Illinois you can. Um, other states have specific rules, and so I would suggest that you uh, contact your local health department or your local extension office, and they'll be able to uh, walk you through that. If you're from Illinois, we have our own website through extension, and it's called From Garden Gates to Dinner Plates, and we have all sorts of information on that uh, website for folks who are thinking about selling items at the farmer's market. So I hope you do. Um, and I wish you good luck. Yeah. Okay, this is going back to our pressure canners. Um, mm -hmm. Are there certain brands of pressure canner lids that cannot be tested by the Presto device? Oh, yes. Excellent question. Um, if you have a weighted gauge on your pressure canner, um, those don't ever need to be tested. They're always accurate. And some of the older uh, American standards are difficult to test, but uh, we can usually um, make it work. <laughs> So, yeah, and that's one of the number one things we have in our office here locally is people bring in the gate, they bring in the gauge that's not a dial gauge. It's right, right, yeah, yeah. So, don't worry about that, you're good to go there. All right, so let's see. Okay, this is a good one too. Um, do you have any mm -hmm. knowledge about lead free jars? I'm relying on Ball Brand. I know some of the older jars of various brands were a problem. Someone online was testing various brands, not sure if I trust anything other than Ball, unless you know um, where they've been tested for lead. I think what we can tell you is anything that you would purchase now will be lead free. Um, some of the older uh, colored jars, for example, uh, might have, have some lead in them and uh, you would want to be careful with that. 
We had a couple of questions. They weren't really questions, more requests for um, good, some kosher dill or refrigerator recipes when it's yeah. dill. And I believe those are already in our handouts. Yes, so I believe they are. And that's what we want, that snappy crunch when we bite into it, right? Yeah. Oh, and somebody asked about the cost. It does not cost to get a pressure gauge tested. No, no, gauge. absolutely not. So. Yeah. yeah, very easy process. Uh, there are uh, occasions when we'll set a date and have folks bring their lids in or drop them off at the extension office. Um, we try and be available to folks um, during this season. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I have seen jars with a variety of veggies, like restaurant style. How does, how does that work? How can I do that at home? Only with quick pickles or water bath and processing as an option. Right. Your quick pickles often have the mixed veggies in them. You can also find some recipes, uh, particularly at the National Center for Home Food Preservation uh, for uh, things they might be um, look under relishes or chow chows, that sort of thing. Um, you can also do the, I'm not going to pronounce it right, the giardiniere, um, which has some oil introduced. Uh, you can find a recipe for that as well. But again, use those tested approved recipes, uh, particularly when you're, when you're mixing different types of veggies and making sure that you have the, the correct acid uh, to veggie ratio. Okay. Can you share the... Can you share the glass company where the jars are breaking <laughs> so they're aware to avoid the brand? I don't know what brand it is where the jars are breaking. That was American Harvest. Ball. Right. I, I haven't heard that. I do remember a few years ago we were having trouble with lids buckling, and that was an off-brand itself. Um, what I caution people about are, are reusing uh, jars that they've purchased with food in them from the grocery store. So, for example, mayonnaise or spaghetti sauce, some of those come in glass jars. And we don't recommend you using those to can uh, simply because that glass has been designed to be processed one time in that commercial setting. And then if we try and reuse it, there is a chance that it could, it could break. Yes. I hope that answered the question. Okay, can, what can I do with my overly soft slash mushy pickles? <laughs> what can oh, I you can make tartar sauce, um, you know, stir them in with a little bit of mayonnaise and lemon juice. Uh, you can use them uh, in any kind of salad, like chicken salad, egg salad, ham salad, any of those um, as, as an ingredient in um, anything like that as uh, a sandwich topping. So, any number of things. <laughs> All kinds of things you could use them for. Yeah. Okay, let's see where else. Okay. Um, I was looking through the ball recipe book this week and I noticed that a number of the pickled slash chutney recipes only make a small number of jars, like three pints mm -hmm. in a boiling water bath. Is there a reason that the recipes can't be doubled for one processing session? Well, usually we don't recommend doubling recipes, particularly for jams and jellies. Um, my guess is that those recipes were designed for this really small home canner who maybe doesn't even have a garden. That's what I'm seeing um, the, the commercial canning companies uh, really catering to that, that person who's not preserving food to eat all winter long, uh, the person who's doing it more for a novelty. And, um, you know, that, that's a very good question. Without looking at the recipe, I, you know, I, I hesitate to ask or to give you permission to double it. We'd want to make sure all the ratios transfer over. Uh, so leave that in the chat box and we'll, uh, we'll do some research and we'll make sure that that is answered in our handouts. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's see. Okay, is there any benefit for soaking pickling cucumbers in an ice bath before making refrigerator pickles? Um, people say that it can help make them a little more firm. All right. Again, you're dealing with the cell wall of the, of the vegetable. Um, I know somebody asked here, and I got a quick run to the website to look a little later, but about our cottage food website. Um, we'll, oh, okay. we'll put that on the handouts as well. And yeah. before, before yeah. we end this session, I'll make sure I do get it in the links as well, just so you have an option to look to go right. check the website. Um, Very good. Okay, um, if you're harvesting, okay, so if we're harvesting our own pickling cucumbers solely but want to pickle them all together, would a brine solution store them longer until we have a larger batch? 
Hmm. <laughs> question. Good question. And you would be storing them whole. Um, I it would have it'd have to be a pretty big vessel in your refrigerator. I would I would want to keep it refrigerated. Um, again, that's something that you know that's kind of a commercial question. Um, but leave that in the chat box, and we'll address that one later too. And I think you did briefly touch on this, but how do I determine how hard slash soft my water is? Oh, right. Well, um, you know, most people will know if they have hard water. They've got those lime deposits in their dishwasher or their tea kettle. Um, most, most water is hard, I, I will tell you that. Um, uh, some commercial uh, water sources that come from deep wells might not be. Um, you can, there, there are different little tests that you can do, like, you know, the little test strips that will tell how hard or soft your water is. So maybe just buy some of those little test strips. If you're, if you don't see those deposits in your tea kettle. Alrighty, so we're at two o'clock right now. I just want to remind everybody about our um, website. There's been a lot of questions about our handouts. They will be coming within the next 10 to, 10 to 15 days. You are going to be getting an email right after this that's going to have a survey. And if you fill out the survey, it will give you a hint. You get the handouts a little faster. <laughs> that's your prize. <laughs> that's your prize for doing our survey. Yes. Um, but yeah, we will make sure with some of the questions that were asked, like I said, all of these questions will be included in um, in your handouts as well. We like doing the Q and A. It's good to know what. Yes, you. Uh, we so appreciate those questions because you bring up things that we didn't think of when we were making um, the PowerPoint, and so you really you really help us because I guarantee you, if you have a question, someone else in the audience is wondering about that same question. So thank you so much for submitting those questions. Yep, and the ones from last week, those ones we will be getting out in the next probably couple days here. Um, it won't be very much longer. We'll be sending those out. So right. I know we've had a couple of questions about last week's. And again, we're waiting about 10 to 15 days to put them up on the website. But if you fill out our survey, we promise we'll get them a little faster. <laughs> so, That's right. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, everybody who attended. Just a quick wrap up here. Just want to talk again, of course, about extending wellness texting program completely free. Um, you can go sign up at go.illinois.edu backslash wellness tips. Um, just again, quick reminder about the survey. You should be getting it hopefully today or tomorrow. Um, and then if you fill that out, like I said, you'll get the handouts a little bit faster. We do appreciate your input. This is actually how we did decide what webinars to do next based on what you guys request and what's been asked. And please join us next week. It'll be me and Susan Glassman, another one of our nutrition educators, talking about preserving apples. Same time, same place, and same format. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you all.